morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh McKelvin. Upon her arrival in Washington in 2010, Kelly Ayotte immediately became a star in the Republican Party. And from powerful committee assignments to a leading voice on national issues, on a myriad of issues, many figured she was destined for a presidential t ticket in the not-too-distant future. But in 2016, Donald Trump upended conventional wisdom and triggered a major shift in thinking by a frustrated electorate who wanted change in whatever form they could find it. And many are convinced that's what costs Kelly Ayotte the election. She is my first guest this morning. Good to see you, Senator. Uh, good morning, Josh. Yeah, so five weeks now, you've had some time to examine this. Yes. What do you think happened? Uh, well, I'm not going to relitigate the le the election. You know, I worked my hardest, and it was such a privilege to represent the people of New Hampshire. And I enjoyed getting out on the campaign trail to talk to people every single day about what was on their mind. And I'm just really looking forward. I, I certainly uh, want to make sure that the country succeeds and that our state uh, really has the, the strongest voice and that's important and that we continue to work on the issues like the heroin epidemic and care for our veterans and and the affordable care act the things that need to be changed you know let's take donald uh, trump out of the equation the campaign equation uh, are you do you find yourself looking back is it are you monday monday morning quarterbacking and all saying if i had just done this or done something differently here or said because you worked really hard during the campaign yeah you give it your all uh fought hard ran my hardest uh left it left it all out on the field and so you can't look back. I mean, the voters of New Hampshire uh, have spoken, and, and I respect that. And so I'm looking forward because you, I work my hardest, and I, I know that for sure. And you had a lot of people behind you as well. Have they been helpful to you, phone calls from your friends in Washington, whether it's Lindsey Graham or John McCain or the folks oh, here? Oh, you know, people, uh, you saw my farewell speech. Many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle were very, very kind. Uh, people that I've worked on in getting things done for New Hampshire and for the country. And and then, of course, folks here at home um, who so many of my supporters, I want to thank all of them who worked so hard, made so many phone calls and uh, really knocked on many doors. So yeah. I just I, I'm grateful for all the support that I got and for the ability to serve the people of New Hampshire, both as a senator and before that as attorney general. Yeah, your, your speech on the Senate floor was fantastic. Was that difficult to write? And what was, what's the hardest part of all this is you, you brought up your staff during the speech saying how hard they've been working. Yeah, for it's and such a great team um, and they've worked so hard both in New Hampshire and Washington uh, to represent the people of New Hampshire and uh, really solve problems, constituent issues, veterans issues, um, issues people have with the IRS. Uh, so, so that's hard. I love my team, so I really will want to make sure they're very talented and I know they're going to continue to contribute to the country. Yeah, so obviously the job doesn't end on election night, still work going on. Uh, today, in fact, uh, uh, one of the bills that you were behind, northern border security. Yes. And yeah, people don't really talk so much about that. Well, and that's the issue. Um, so this is a bipartisan bill I led, and it's really evaluating our northern border uh, with Canada because uh, that border, we focus a lot on the southern border, and, and understandably so, uh, but the northern border is still one we need to focus on to make sure the security's there. Uh, when it comes to issues like terrorism, that we're focusing on uh, what's the best strategy, and that's what this commission is about, a focus on the northern border, and what do we need to do if we have any gaps in security, we address them, and so that we're not just solely focusing on the southern border. And as you look back, have you had any time to reflect at all? I mean, because you had a busy six years, and you you have your hand in a lot of I did a lot of pots yeah there. I did uh, you know it's been as I said such an honor to represent New Hampshire uh, focusing on just this past week about a week ago the 21st century cures bill passed and a billion dollars in funding uh, to address the heroin epidemic I fought really hard for that and uh, was really glad that that funding was in the bill. It goes hand in hand with the bill that I worked on to get past the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act that I, I led the effort on, yeah. um, a very bipartisan bill. And that really sparked, a lot of people said, well, where's the money from it? But you know, we it did lead money. to money. It of did course. spark some other discussions. It did, that sparked getting this money. Um, so they're very related and they go hand in hand. And so, um, you know, those are efforts I'm proud of. And you know, we need to do a lot more for our veterans. That was so important to me, keeping our nation safe. The work I did on the Armed Services Committee, for example, to try to stop this administration from releasing dangerous terrorists from Guantanamo, yeah. uh, to make sure that our men and women in uniform have what they need. The shipyard, uh, our, you know, obviously our refueling unit, just an amazing work done by our men and women in uniform and their sacrifices. That that work to me, it was really important in my time in the Senate. Yeah, talk about the veterans uh, right now. Uh, one of a friend of yours, uh, Scott Brown, former Senator yes. uh, Scott Brown, un under consideration uh, to lead the VA. Good choice? 
I think so. I think a very good choice. I think Scott understands not only being a veteran himself, he understands the real uh, problems there and the fact that uh, we need to make sure that veterans don't wait in a state like New Hampshire that they can get that local care without going through all the, the runaround that they do right now, something that I've worked very strongly on. Uh, and so we do need changes uh, to make sure that it's about serving those who have served us and them getting the best service. So I think he understands that. Talking about Washington right now, the way it is, I, I mean, the handcuffs, I imagine, you must feel like are about to come off. Uh, is there a sense of liberation that, you know what, now I can say what I want to and I'm not boxed in by a campaign or messaging or things like that? Yeah, you, you feel like that. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of said a lot of what I wanted to anyway. When sure. I think people understood that uh, when I was serving New Hampshire. And no, I so, didn't mean to suggest that, that you were. Yeah. Uh, but it's easier to say, you know, that something is wrong when you're not going to be punished for it to a certain degree. Maybe I'm not articulating it very well. From your experience in Washington over the last six years, what is the biggest problem when it comes to getting things done? Because clearly we saw on election night that people are just frustrated and, and they'll yeah, ask for I change no matter what. I think one of the things is that we need to focus on results and working together. And obviously that's something I did in the Senate. I had a very bipartisan record. And I think one of the things that I saw coming out of this campaign is uh, we saw, you know, how that basically this was a huge money campaign, you know, yeah. oh, I think it could be up close to $150 million. It's, it's crazy. So I think also just making sure we're focusing on serving people and not having, you know, all of this influence from the outside as well. I think that's really important. And I hope people take that up and address that. Uh, how do you, what do you consider the health of the Republican Party right now? I mean, it's so many different factions and, and, you know, it's a tough umbrella to get everybody underneath when there's so many different opinions. Um, how is the GOP these days? Yeah, I think the GOP is, uh, they're doing well. I think it's strong. I think obviously a new Republican uh, president-elect that people are enthusiastic about making changes and uh, doing some of the things and really turning around some of the, the things that we saw under President Obama and this administration that are taking our country in the wrong direction on national security, on the health care law, uh, on the debt. So there's great opportunity and I think there's a lot of enthusiasm in our party right now and I'm, I'm excited to see it. Yeah, and obviously you spend a lot of time and energy on national security, foreign relations, things along those lines. Rex Tillerson is a name that nobody heard of last week at this time right. and now he's, he's the, the nominee. We'll see what happens in the Senate. What's your take on the on the CEO of Exxon Mobil being named the chief diplomat? My of the take US? is this: um, first of all, I think that obviously he has some tremendous uh, qu qualifications in terms of his role as a CEO internationally, uh, traveling around the world. So he understands, I think, uh, leadership around the world. And so he comes to it with some some very strong qualifications. I think there's some real questions, though, uh, that I know many of my colleagues are going to pursue about um, his views on Russia. He did receive a, a, you know, a friendship award from Russia very recently in the last couple of years. And uh, our you know, I, I view our issues with Russia as one where really Putin's a bully. Um, he is someone who uh, is in a position where we need to understand that he's not our friend. And so I think there's some real questions that will be raised by my Senate colleagues about what his views are on Russia, how he views uh, Vladimir Putin, and also uh, what's his view on sanctions. For example, Russian invasion of, of uh, Ukraine, and will he want to lift sanctions there? And, and you, I think you have a perspective on this that a lot of people don't have. You've been there, you've seen I have. Uh, um, the I've been to Ukraine, and I've also helped oversee their presidential elections um, following, you know, following what happened in Maidan with the massacre there, and uh, when the people spoke up for their for their own sovereignty, and then Russia obviously invaded uh, Ukraine in the Crimea, Crimea region. So yes, I'm very familiar with it. Uh, we need to be strong with Russia. Clearly, the Obama policy toward Russia was a huge failure. So uh, the president-elect needs to set a new course with Russia, a much stronger one um, than we have had. And so these are real questions that will be asked of the individual yeah. who he's saying is going to nominate uh, for Secretary of State. But obviously, he comes into it with a tremendous amount of experience. And uh, I know that my Senate colleagues will give him a fair hearing and really just give him an opportunity to talk about what his views are here. Yeah, I mean, and, and uh, President-elect has been heavily criticized for his approach to Vladimir Putin, saying he's willing to talk, willing to engage. Um, is there something to be 
you said, do you think perhaps, though, for keep your friends close and your enemies closer? I think the biggest thing when it comes to dealing with Vladimir Putin that we did not see with President Barack Obama is strength. And so um, I, I would like to see our, our President-elect Trump go in in a position of strength. Uh, we have to understand who we're dealing with when it comes to Vladimir Putin. As I've said before, he's a bully. And so uh, no doubt that um, under the Obama administration, the reset policy, that was a failure. And so I look forward to seeing the President-elect set a stronger, tougher new tone. Uh, with Russia, and so we'll see uh, whether he does that, but he has a real opportunity to do that. Were you disappointed that Mitt Romney, I mean, obviously a lot of people say that that wasn't even real at this point, this was payback by Donald Trump on on uh, 2012 Republican nominee for president. Were you disappointed, though, because I know a lot of other people felt comforted by the idea of somebody like a Mitt Romney. Well, you know, I know Mitt well, and I think he's very, very qualified, um, but it, it's really the president-elect's call. And uh, so you have to respect that. And But I certainly thought that Mitt Romney was very qualified to serve. And I know he interviewed others that I thought were very qualified as well to potentially serve as Secretary of State. All right, uh, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, talk about uh, future plans and yes. your achievements from the last six years. Sounds great. All right, be right back. Stay with us.